So this then gets to the conundrum of uh, commanders haven't exactly been stellar stopping the run sure. this year. Um, there is, it feels like a potential opportunity to, to fix that. What do they have to do against what Cincinnati does specifically in the run game to ensure that this that the get right game is for the Washington run defense and not for the Cincinnati rush offense? Yeah, um, <laughs> that's a good question. Because uh, again, I, I would actually be okay if they were semi efficient running the football. If they're running the ball for like four yards of carry, that's fine. Because I think you hit this beautifully on our last show. Like at some point, they're going to have a negative or neutral run. And then that's where we have to be. We have to earn our money. You know what I'm saying? That's where, as a yeah. defense, we have to make it go. If on first and 10, they run it for 15, that sucks. But now it's first and 10 again. And if you get a tackle for loss and it's second and 13, now you're in business. Yeah, now we're in business. And now we can play our soft coverage structure. We can bring our man pressures. We can do the stuff that we want to do. Let John and Duran find those one-on-ones and push the pocket. Because, again, I, I think they've got some guards that are good players, but over the last couple of weeks, they haven't looked. And again, they're playing Keon White in New England, who looks like he's the second coming of J.J. Watt all of a sudden, yeah, right? Like, awesome. So anyway, so but that's besides the point. Uh, the uh, But I think there are opportunities there to to, to, to make that happen. Because if, if Joe Burrow's throwing it all the time, that's the best version of what they do. Right. And again, they, they, you know, the right now they're, they don't have T Higgins. Jamar Chase looks a little bit disgruntled. He's still playing fine football, but they have, you know, um, the kid from Princeton over there on the other side. I forget his name at the moment, but they have Gasecki. They have Burton, the rookie from Alabama, a third round pick who's kind of their vertical threat, but they don't have like that elite playmaker opposite him. So they're good offensively and they have guys that can hurt you, no doubt. Yosivas is his name. Um, but they have those guys out there. But it's really it's it's a it's it's funny watching it because it looks so stagnant, right? And they're really just relying on him just being an amazing football player. So I'm saying I don't want him touching the ball at all. Like let's disguise coverages, let's give him soft structures, let's encourage him to run the football. And when we get that opportunity in that second and long, third and long situation, we got to make sure we get home in terms of pressure. And he will hold the heck out of the football because he is that type of playmaker. He wants to make the play. He wants to push push the football down the field. He said that in pressers, you know, since he's gotten in the league, he's like, I don't really care about taking a sack on third and long because I I know that making the play on third and long is the more decisive thing. So let's take advantage of those moments. And if we can, again, it's a big if because he's a heck of a ball player. But if you can take advantage of a couple of those moments, you're in business defensively. It's just it's you're walking a very thin uh thin path there and um you don't want to slip off obviously right schematically it's not the challenge but like it you know on a baseline level this is a team that struggled uh to cover big time receivers and you have one of the best quarterbacks in the league and one of the best receivers in the league that you're having to face and so there's an inherent challenge there no matter what the scheme is and that's why the the scheme it does become so important of okay you we definitely don't have the horses in washington to cover Jamar Chase. You're not going to line up BSJ or anybody else that, you know, Noah or Michael Davis or the whoever they they call up Chig, whoever they they put over there. You don't want that dude one-on-one with Jamar Chase. So you get into these these coverage structures that have more players over there, you know, it's it's cover two type stuff where you got someone underneath him, you got someone over the top of him, you're bracketing him, whatever it is. But Logan, that then kind of delivers the conundrum in the run game of, okay, well now we're light and that's been the problem so far. My question would be then what options exist for Joe from a personnel standpoint to mitigate some of that? Because Mike Sainer still has, I think Mike Sainer still is going to be a great player. I have zero, uh, you know, my, my opinion on what he's going to be hasn't changed, but he is a lighter, smaller guy who is a rookie. This will be his third ever game. And he hasn't quite figured out how to play the run in the NFL at five foot nine yet. And so whether it's Quan is like a Buffalo nickel or, you know, they, they move Noah inside as a more physical nickel kind of guy or, you know, some of those three safety looks and, and how they move those guys around. How do they if, if they're going to from a structure standpoint for Cincinnati to run the football or beg Cincinnati to run the football? What else can they do slash should they do to make sure that they're ready for those runs? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, obviously a guy that in terms of personnel that sticks out to me is Jeremy Chin. And Jeremy Chin's been a little bit up and down. But in terms of understanding the urgency and the physicality like on film, in terms of like what it takes to stop the run at the NFL level, like there's a couple plays where he's like, 
the overhang. There's a three by one. So three by one to the defensive right. So he's in the slot to the right, basically. And they start running a run in that direction. And there is literally like no hesitation, no pause. He is absolutely hauling to the B gap. Like it's like the second he sees it, he's going. And again, when you're, when you're playing that Buffalo nickel, that overhang player, that the extra run defender in those light boxes, like that's the level of intensity and speed you need to be playing with. So I do think because of his experience in the NFL, because of his size, I think he's got a good feel for that. So if there's a body that I'd want to put in there, I think it'd be that body. Um, and I think just looking at some of the film, I think they've got to clean up some of, some of the stuff in terms of how they're fitting runs and, you know, the, the depth at which they're attacking certain gaps. And I'm very confident Joe Wood Jr. will get that cleaned up. But I think that's kind of what I would, what I would lean towards is like Percy at safety, Quan at safety, uh, Jeremy kind of is that linebacker Buffalo nickel hybrid role. And, um, and again, they have good players. They have Mike Kosecki, who's very explosive. They have Drew Sample, who's kind of their blocking Y at tight end. They have, um, Eric all from Iowa, who is way more explosive than I thought. So they have a lot of explosive pieces at tight end, but I do feel like if they're going to play those guys, Jeremy Chin actually matches up really well from a coverage standpoint with them because of his length and his size. Now, if they go true, you know, 11 and they're trotting out a third wide receiver. I don't know if you feel as comfortable, but I think the good thing is, is because T Higgins is holding out, they don't really have a true third wide out. They really rely on the tight end room being that third guy. And again, Gasecki's basically a big slot, you know, at this point in his career, he doesn't block, he doesn't do anything. He's playing receiver. So, but I do think from a movement standpoint, Chin would match up okay with that. So Chin on Gasecki, I, I don't love it, but I, I'm okay with it. And Chim and Chin in the run game, I think, is a, is a really good matchup for us. So that's probably the way I would lean early on in this game. Um, and then obviously on third and long situations, when they do find when they do bring more speed to the field, I'd probably bring uh, Sandra still in. So uh, just real quick, uh, we're recording this on Thursday morning. Uh, so obviously we haven't seen an injury report for the week right. yet. Normally we have at least one. Um, at this point, I think Higgins is out with the hamstring injury more so right. than the holdout. So um, he, there's a chance he winds up playing, which could obviously change the math here in a way that uh, is not great because he's really, really good at football. Um, so there's a chance that he's going to play. Obviously, we're still also waiting to see. I uh, should have mentioned this on the the other uh, the earlier portion of the podcast. Both those defensive tackles are, are probably questionable at this point going into the week. Uh, neither of them finished the game against the Chiefs on Sunday. Um, so going to be interesting to see how the injury shape. And obviously, we'll see what happens with the commanders, too, and, and anybody that pops up during the week. Um, one name that I did want to ask about though, on kind of that safety front, because there's a lot of fans and even some media folks that are, uh, all aboard the get Defo back on the field bandwagon. Right. Um, what is, what do you make of, of that? I don't really have a strong take on that either way. Um, and if you do, I'd like to know why. Um, I think he's, again, he played well last, when was that two years ago before he was hurt? Yeah. Um, but in training camp, he was just, okay you know like he was fine um and i think i think that's okay you know what i mean i don't think i think percy definitely played better than him i think Quan definitely played better i think jeremy brings a more unique physicality to the position that is valuable to this defense so um as much as i like defoe as a person i like how he plays like i just haven't seen it through training camp because again he had a hamstring injury he didn't do a lot in preseason like and when he did play against Miami, it was a little up and down um, because he's, he first came back, all that kind of stuff. So I don't really have a, a strong reason as to why he should play. I don't think those guys in the back end have played poorly by like the safety specifically. Obviously, there's some communication issues that need to be resolved that look with anything. But from a effort, attitude, physicality standpoint, I'm not like get these guys off the field. Like, so I don't know if there needs to be a, a transition or a switch. Yeah, I agree. And I think it's like... Can we think for five seconds before we tweet something? Sometimes, like, I think people are upset with Jeremy Chin because of missed tackles. And one, we talked about on the film review pod why some of those aren't really on Jeremy Chin. He's being asked to do something impossible because other people in front of him are making his job more Harsh. difficult than it needs to be. Also, missed tackles happen early in NFL seasons because we don't, uh, they, they've outlawed practicing full tackling to the ground. Tackling typically gets better. And so if your solution 
to miss tackles is to bring in someone who hasn't played, who's inevitably going to miss tackles because they haven't tackled in a while either. You haven't actually gotten a solution. And also Derek Forrest wasn't a guy who never missed a tackle. And there's just kind of this absence makes the heart grow fonder bit that's happening. And again, I also love Defoe. Great dude. Interviewed him in the spring. One of my favorite interviews of the entire spring. Um, I do think he's a good football player that could play, you know, if he's starting for you, you're not, you're not DOA. Um, but I don't think he's better necessarily than Jeremy Chan. He certainly wasn't in the spring, uh, or the fall. And he is rusty cause he didn't, you know, he, he did have, uh, time off in camp with that hamstring injury and then he hasn't played. So if, if your solution to miss tackles from Jeremy Chan is bringing in another guy who's just as likely to miss tackles. You you just want to play musical chairs. That's not actually a solution. Yeah, and I think you know, like if you watch the Miami preseason game, like he missed some tackles. You know, he missed sure some did. coverage responsibilities, and like sure did. That's again, and I'm not saying that you know he's bad or anything like that. Like he just had a tough game, and so if anything, I'd probably say like, oh, maybe they'd be more apt to bring in like a Dominique Hampton or I don't know somebody like that who again but Dominique was playing linebacker at the end of the thing you know what I'm saying so I don't right. know and I think Tyler Owens while a dynamic special teams player still has a little ways to go when it comes to playing safety so um I think I think right now this is the best configuration and obviously that's subject to change and you know maybe Defoe's crushing it in the film room and practicing like an absolute maniac which I'm sure he is and I'm sure he's trying to do and they changed their mind at some point and that's totally fine but as of as of today what is this Thursday whatever um I think there's I think right now those three guys that we mentioned Percy Quan and uh and Jeremy are, are the three that I would go with because I think that they deserve it or they deserve a little bit of kind of to see how it goes I guess no, I, I agree. I think they've probably been at their best with all due respect to Mikey, like when those three have been on the field, partially because Percy's playing really, really well. Yeah. Um, and I, I do wonder if they use, you know, obviously Quan's been transitioned full time to safety, but with his experience in Maybe. the box, if you want some of the if you want to flip those two dudes out a little bit, especially if you're playing like more of a too high situation, I don't want Chin playing middle field safety. That's not his that's not his jam. But if you have him as a too high and you get Quan down in the box, if a guy like Gasicki is down there, like that becomes an interesting option as well. And I, I just mentioned the personnel stuff because Dan mentioned it uh earlier in the week of like we gotta find the right personnel to to help fit the these runs and, and play with our options options with nickel personnel on the field. So I do wonder if that is an option for them to, to switch Kwan and chin a little bit more to, yeah. you know, play with different uh, guys coming in and out of the, the lineup in terms of who's up, who's down. Um, and I, I, the one other one I'll mention too, depending on what they do on the outside corner situation is, uh, if you want a little bit bigger nickel in there, Noah did play yeah. pretty well, in, he played in, well. The pre, in the preseason at nickel and we have seen the physicality he plays with. So not that I'm saying like, Hey, replace Zaner still full time. But if you want to have, I know everyone's like, ah, don't say Buffalo nickel. Cause it was a Ron thing, but like Ron didn't invent the Buffalo nickel. Jack yeah. didn't invent the Buffalo nickel. Like the Just idea of having nickel. a big Just nickel, a big nickel. It, like yeah, whatever you want to call it, Buffalo nickel, rhino nickel, whatever you want to call it. Just a Ooh, bigger, rhino nickel. I like that. Yeah. That sounds bigger, violent. Bigger uh, person in there. Yeah. If you want that body type, no egg is someone who, uh, who could do that. All right. That is our preview show for today. Uh, we are we were gonna do Monday Night Football stories uh, for Take Five, um, but but Logan didn't really remember any. Yeah, so what we're gonna do in, in our Take in Five? <laughs> yeah, well, there we could, I'm sure if we started pulling up game logs and I yeah, jogged I your memory, you'd be yeah. like, oh yeah. But here's here's what we're gonna do in Take Five tomorrow. Um, there's a big looming question about uh, that, that Ben Stanek actually brought to Dan Quinn uh, on. Tuesday, Monday, whenever his last press conference was about how certain teams like the Giants did last week with Malik Neighbors and like the Bengals have often done with with Jamar Chase will just spam a receiver. Let's get him 15, 18, 20 targets in a game. Justin Jefferson obviously gets that treatment. CeeDee Lamb gets that treatment. And for years, I think Commanders fans have been like, why can't Terry McLaurin get that treatment? We'll talk about it on Take 5 tomorrow, so make sure you're subscribed to Take Command, and we will see you then. And then uh, off we go into another football weekend. Thanks for watching and listening, and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching this clip of Take Command, which has a brand new home. That's right. You can watch on YouTube at the Team 980. You can also listen to full episodes in the free Odyssey app, which is now enabled with Apple CarPlay. So we'll just, you know, follow you around. <laughs> <laughs>